laws and, uh, and sort of repealing that EU law. Yes, well, joining us now to hopefully answer some of these questions is Peter Barnes, political commentator and strategist. Peter, what do you make about this then? Is this a hark back to Brexit principles or do you think it's a bit of a show stunt? I think it's a bit of both, really. Okay. Um, in a way, I think it's a bit of a nostalgia. Some, like you said, it's a really good feel, good factor kind of story for kind of certain generations and a kind of voter that Boris really needs to win back, particularly post-party gate. Um, whether it's going to have any major impact, I, I'm not 100% convinced by it, but I think it's little things like this that... Just push him a little bit full, a little bit further on, and then he'll do something else. It'll be a little bit more, and I think that's probably the strategy that they'll be going with. And we'll just have to see how well it works. I mean, Boris clearly one of Boris's political strategies is to stay popular, yeah. just as a person himself, and to create feel-good headlines. Mm. And there's no doubt he has achieved that this morning. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, uh, since Partygate, uh, Boris's personal brand took a real heavy hitting. If you notice, the Conservatives have started to move away from having Boris's front and centre. If you looked at 2019, you'd think Boris was the Conservative Party. Mm. Um, in terms of creating all the stories, I think, particularly as we kind of live through the cost of living crisis and, and those kind of, that kind of feel as though things aren't really going very well and he needs to kind of get a little bit of positivity back in the country, the, the, the small things like this, weirdly in this country, often Matter. work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in other countries, I, d I don't really think that this would really be a thing. But um, over here, we're very nostalgic over our kind of pounds and ounces. One thing I will say is there's a couple of generations that have never used pounds and ounces. Yes, true. My generation being one of them. And I, I often sometimes have to sit on my phone on my converted thing to try and work everything out. Yeah, but you're snowflakes. <laughs> you're snowflakes. You can, only, you can only multiply by things by ten. Hey, that's true, yeah. And we all carry around a phone with a calculator right now. So. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. But, Peter, it is a bit of a mess, isn't it? I mean, we voted for Brexit. Brexit won. It is, I think, time to step away from European regulations, to come away from grams and perhaps go back to, to British ways, stick to one system. Would that not make more sense? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think one of the things that has annoyed a lot of uh, kind of the old kind of vote leave kind of team within the Conservative Party and the kind of that feeling is that there's not been enough regulation cutting. Like, you know, Brexit was supposed to be rolling back the state. It's supposed to be about reclaiming everything back into Britain. And that hasn't really happened. I know we had the pandemic and that took up a mm. lot of political capital and time. But one thing I think with the Conservatives for kind of gaining some popularity back is to do these kind of things, start rolling things back. And it, it should have really been happening from day one, but uh, it's been a Well, maybe some of these <laughs> things were going to happen, as you say, but yeah. the pandemic stopped it. Will it be enough, though, even if, even if uh, the, the Tories get some really positive headlines mm. for the next two weeks, which they're likely yeah. to do, given the pattern in Jubilee, um, even, even given that, will that be enough to convince uh, the sceptics within the Tory party, who are, again, headline, headlining, or at least they're trying to make headlines, by saying that he's taking away the Tory identity? He's, this is no longer a Tory government. That's what they're worried about. The problem with using phrases like Tory identity is there was a huge difference between Theresa May, David Cameron, Ian Duncan Smith. Like every leader kind of rebrands mm -hmm. the Conservative Party and has its own identity. Uh, the th I, one thing I would say is that Boris really needs to kind of set aside, like, sorry, set uh, the principle as to where he stands on a lot of issues. He seems to kind of float around the kind of Tory political spectrum a bit too much, and I think that's why he gets attacked, basically, from all sides of the Tory party, because he doesn't really kind of sit anywhere in particular. Like most things with Boris Johnson, the normal rules just don't apply. Mm. <laughs> it's what not just him, though. It's Rishi as well. Yes, it? yes. And Rishi... Um, Again, he was kind of for a long time kind of seen as a kind of Thatcherite, kind of wanting to be that kind of rolling back the state kind of thing. And now he's coming as one of the, you know, a, a kind of tax and spend kind of chancellor with the, some of the highest tax rates we've seen in a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think it is a little ridiculous when you keep hearing him say, um, we're a Tory co a tax cutting Tory party. And mm -hmm. I'm like, sorry, that just doesn't stack up to what people feel when they look at the pay packets at the end of the week. Well, he says that with a but at the yeah, end. But we yeah, are going yeah, through bumpy times. Yeah, that's always, that's always the excuse that you see. See, but uh, like I said, maybe we'd like to we could we're on midterms really right okay. now. We've got two years, we never know. Well, I think the plan seems to be that just before the election, we'll start to see us slashing our taxes just as the, the general election hits. Yes, Peter, I wanted to ask you about a story on the front of the Sunday Telegraph this morning the PM's war on rip off petrol stations. Uh, Boris Johnson is going to vow to name and shame those who fail to pass on the fuel duty cuts. Tell us a bit, bit more about this. I think this is a really good thing for the PM to go after. I don't know about you, but I always feel like there's a little bit of profiteering going on at the minute. I, like Cost of living is being used by a lot of companies, I think, to put prices up anyway as people start to feel the pinch. I have to admit, I was really shocked uh, by this, like, an organisation called Fair Fuel UK, and they, they look into petrol stations and things like that. And it seems that since 2016, 
the amount of money that some stations have made has gone up 126%. Wow. It's absolutely staggering. And I think, you know, this this is kind of what I think where Boris is really good at, like, kind of waging a campaign and getting rallying people behind him. I think this could probably pay off a lot better than, say, the pints, <laughs> the this pint glasses. <laughs> a huge difference to people. I was outside a petrol station in Chelsea. It's actually the most expensive pump in the country. Yeah. Probably no surprise it is in Chelsea. Mm. Um, £2.18 it yeah. was. Uh, per litre. I know which one you, I don't know what. Away from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. How much would that be per yeah. gallon? Per <laughs> gallon. Exactly. Much more frightening. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. But, uh, as you say, in a cost of living crisis, that's something that's affecting people every single day. Yeah. So, I mean, if. And it's wrong that just because it's in Chelsea, it should be more expensive. Well, I clearly it's the think same people petrol. pay it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's something that um, will really help. It's actually uh, places in the countryside where, you know, you really do need to be able to drive and, you know, at least lot longer, greater distances between places. I think uh, the PM really focusing and that area could also be good politically considering that a lot of the kind of traditional blue the blue wall seats, as they're called, seem to be wavering a little bit against Boris. And we've got two by-elections coming up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, and that could probably not go... Uh, Tory way, I suppose. Yeah. The Lib Dems likely to do well, do you think? Well, they, they usually do, but it, it's all about kind of how much effort they put into it. I think, and there's also this kind of supposed pact between the Labour Party and the Lib Dems and uh, whether there's kind of, not really uh, collusion is probably not the right word, but kind of working in tandem with each other. Arrangements, yeah. Mm. You know, nods and winks and in back room deal, in back rooms and everything. But, uh, I'd, yeah, I'm not expecting the Tory party to do overly well, uh, but um, it will be a good kind of, kind of litmus test to see where the party is now uh, whether we kind of party gate kind of rolls to a conclusion and then to see, like, they can then re reset the agenda and move forward. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. Bumpy ride, as <laughs> Boris said. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you.